Hey, my name's Emily, and uh, before I go any further, I just want to say that this is my first YouTube video. Probably will be my last, but I really wanted to come on here and um, share my experience. I just had the ablation, catheter ablation procedure done to fix my arrhythmia, which is SVT. I had it done on Wednesday. Today's Monday, so it's been five days. And um, I hope that if you're considering it or have had it, that my story will help you in some way to either decide to have it done or if you're dealing with some post-op discomfort, um, hopefully it will bring you some comfort. So um, a little bit of history. I'm 31 years old. I have absolutely no health conditions. I never have. And I was been completely healthy my entire life. When I was 27 weeks pregnant, I bent over to pick up a washcloth and I went into SVT and I had no clue what was going on. It was probably the scariest moment of my life because I, I well, anybody who has SVT knows it's like you're dying um, or you're going to. And I called 911 in the while I was waiting for them to get there, I picked up my daughter, and I think that the weight of her and the bearing down to lift her actually converted me. So, of course, the paramedics show up, they put me on the monitor, and they tell me that I'm fine. And um, basically left telling me that I was having a panic attack. So, for everyone who has SVT, and has been told that, which I think most of us have. It's really a troubling diagnosis because it's not a panic attack and it doesn't feel anything like one. So, um, like I said, I had no clue what was going on. And I think it was like two weeks later, doing the same exact thing, bending over, standing up, I went into SVT again. And of course, that time I'm like, oh, you know, I'm just having a panic attack again. Really fast, heart rated, like, gonna die heart attack, panic attack. No big deal. So I just kind of waited it out. And, man, like 20 minutes later, I went outside and I got my husband and I was like, I know everybody thinks this is a panic attack, but you need to see this. And my shirt... My heart was beating so fast that my shirt was actually just pulsating. I mean, it was lifting off my body. And I said to him, I said, I know they're telling me this is a panic attack, but it's not, and I need to go to the emergency room. So I didn't call the paramedics, of course, because I was, like, feeling like a loser. And drove a half hour to the hospital. So at this point, I've been in SVT for, like, an hour and I get to the hospital, and they put me on the monitor, and my heart was like, I want to say, I think it was close to 250 beats per minute, and they told me to bear down, they told me to do this, do that, nothing was working, so they gave me the lovely adenosine, which I was lucky enough to have twice, because the first shot didn't work, um, so they had to give it to me again, and they were finally able to bring my heart rate down to, I think, like 180. I mean, it was still really high. But um, <clears throat> I don't think they knew what to do with me because I was pregnant and having SVT. So they sent me to another hospital an hour away. I was kept two nights. And I was pretty much told, you know, obviously they knew what it was because they were able to pick it up in the first emergency room. But, you know, I didn't know what was going on. So... They told me what I had, but I had no clue if I was going to die from it. No one ever told me that. Um, in fact, the second day that I was there, I finally said to a doctor, am I going to die? And just in complete, you know, I was just in tears. And she was just like, no. And I still, I just didn't know what was going on. But, you know, it was just, it was so stressful. And they told me, basically that it would resolve after I had my son. So um, I had my son during labor. I had PVCs all over the place. 
no SVT, thankfully. But um, I came home after having him, and I was having PVCs, which the cardiologist was telling me was normal. Um, and then I woke up in the middle of the night, and I was in SVT. So obviously things didn't get better. And from that point on, I've just had SVT on and off randomly for the last three and a half years, I would say. Um, I stopped drinking caffeine. I tried to limit my stress, tried to get more sleep. Um, obviously don't smoke, try not to eat chocolate. I mean, you know all the triggers and you try to avoid them. And even with that, it wasn't helping. And honestly, I've got two kids three and five, and I really miss my coffee. So I went back to the cardiologist after my last attack, which was about a month ago. Um, I called the paramedics at that point because I couldn't convert. I was home alone, and I was almost passing out. And I just thought to myself, I do not want to do this anymore. So I went to my cardiologist. He told me I had three choices. I could either live with it and not do anything. I could take a beta blocker or I could have the ablation. And I was really at that point so desperate that I said to him, what do you think I should do? And he said, I think you should have the ablation. Now, of course, there's a lot of people who are going to say red flag. Of course he's going to say that. That's how he makes his living. Blah, blah, blah. I get it. I'm like totally into alternative medicine, but I felt really at peace with this. I felt like he really had my best interests in mind. And I feel like he really didn't care what I did, but I think that he just wanted it to be gone because I have no medical history, I'm young, and I think, like he said, why do you want, why should you have to worry about this anymore? Which, it was completely consuming me. So, that's my history, and obviously, I decided to have the surgery. So, I will tell you about that. 